Oh, seems to have started. Why? The tech road here again. I thought I'd make a small review and sort of future look into 2019. So I'd like to throw out a few discussion items, comments about micro YouTube and social media in general in 2019. I think there's going to be quite a shift in the um, social media platforms this year. Um, that's Like one of the biggest impacts is that the um, when you're combining um, video content either in its um, static format or live with social media you know, or social interaction, and um, it's been quite interesting that Google uh, failed with its G G Plus initiative. I mean, it just bombed. So basically, the very interesting that we have a corner of the internet which is dominated by YouTube, and um, but it really doesn't have the um, social networking intrinsic intrinsic functionality that you have, for example, in in Facebook, and then you have other platforms like Instagram and um, and Twitter and, and things which are like on the fringes. So I think that the so I think this will have a have a kind of a fragmenting effect on the social networks scene and content creation landscape. Uh, one shouldn't ignore also the fact that there are, I mean, all these platforms basically need money to operate, and um, you know. To be able to have money to operate, money needs to flow from A to B, and there are uh, quite a few very big financial institutions like credit card processors and other things that can actually and have shown interest in the in certain social media activities and have put their uh, put their thumb on the financial flows, uh, which has affected certain um, like for example video content creators. And I, and I think that that is uh, actually going to increase. It's not going to decrease. And uh, there is no entity on this planet, everything from a personal person to a large corporation that can work for very long without any kind of finance. So th this will put its mark on the landscape. Um, also, the other thing is that when you get um, large-scale financial um, control over things, then uh, it, it does tend to have an effect on marginalized interest groups. Um, because basically these um, big finance stream managers, they basically look after the interest of the, like the majority. And then um, the other thing that we've seen is the you know the legislation's impact on on the internet. I mean, the internet's becoming more of like a utility functionality, like water and telephone and electricity, and now it's the data communication. And, and in the U.S., for example, they lost the battle for you know the for the free internet. And um, so. Basically, we'll see what kind of winds um, will flow worldwide. I think when the internet become, um, is becoming as big as it's becoming, it's more likely that there's going to be more control over flow, the information flow on the internet, not less. Um, then, of course, there's also um, when the internet and social media and media creation becomes more. Um, globalized, then it's an issue that you have uh, regionalized and local laws and regulations that need to be followed. And the big, but one of the biggest things is the EU copyright legislation, which in itself I don't think there's a really a big problem. It's just that there's a difference of opinion between the US and the European Union how copyrighted material should be treated and handled. 
and I'm not a lawyer so I can't really explain the details but that's the main issue um, so uh, but it, that also be other other regional or country based um, laws that will have an impact on how the internet or the social media scene develops now I have to realize that the majority of all these social media uh, uh, infrastructures are uh, based out of and owned by companies based in the United States. And I haven't got anything against companies or companies being run from the United States. It's just I find it a very, very strange that the only may, only viable competitors to those platforms that exist in like you can find examples that come up to the same levels of user um, in country in China and, and also in country in India. But n nothing in Europe. And, 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 th and that I find to be a very, very weird situation. And, and I mean, you go down the list, you have YouTube, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have Twitter, XXX, and, and, and no, no competition in Europe, from Europe. So this, this I think is going to actually, you know, the, the friction is going to increase between the European Union and the US when it comes to social media platforms, because this is considered to be very anti-competitive. <laughs> yeah, and as the platforms become more mainstream and mainstream influences drive, then um, it is the issue what will happen to us micro YouTubers. I mean, will we just be cleaned, you know, put in, you know, wiped up like you know, so many dust particles and put in the dustbin as legacy, or will we have a place? I do think that there are good opportunities for um, multiple outlets for for our content, and I think there are consumers for our content also. So I think that we should continue working towards that. I mean, I don't know if we micro YouTubers have any interest in being um, large scale, large scale YouTubers. Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. But, but I think that's important that there is a place for um, niche providers so that we can survive on the media, in the media scene. And um, yeah, I just like to put out also positive message so I think this is a fantastic situation we live in um, it's just that one should probably di diverge one's um, platforms like one shouldn't be 100% reliant on YouTube and it's um, wins and whims so I think that one should also build a presence in other social media platforms and then because they are also like uh, Facebook is building up and has an infrastructure for video and so has other um, other platforms. I mean, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, you name it, has an infrastructure also for um, video-based yeah, um, content. And um, yeah, and then we'll see. Also, the income streams. I mean, it's very clear that YouTube doesn't want to have anything to do with financing small players. I mean, they put their limit. They they have limits now, and they're probably going to just make those limits bigger. Because they want to clean it. They want to basically, from a, re a, a revenue supporting perspective, probably get rid of all the small, small players. But there is an opportunity for small players in terms of um, other financial stream opportunities. Um, uh, like you can become a, yeah, you can say you can refer products and stuff like that and get money for that if you need to finance your channel. And I think most even micro YouTubers would like to finance their channel up to a certain level. I mean, we, I don't know how many really intends to be rich on it. Some, you know, it's everything from running it as a hobby, uh, like I do, every, to up to that you need to have enough revenue coming in that you can actually live off of it and don't have to work a full-time job. But, um, yeah. So that was my, you know, kind of looking into the sort of uh, micro-YouTubing scene and the social media situation for 2019. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, 
know YouTube will probably continue being large, but there are pressures on on Google and YouTube, and um, we'll see what they will do with us. Like less less valuable from an advertising perspective, YouTubers. And um, yeah, and and I would suggest for micro YouTubers is to actually um, diverse onto other social media platforms. Um, to a certain extent, they pro provide, at least for social interaction, they provide more options than what YouTube does. You know, in YouTube, you're all, uh, you know, ah, now I'm starting to ramble. But basically, I think that in, in, in the YouTube world, you're very locked into the um, formula system that um, Google YouTube provides, and there's no way to have any effect on it. If their if their algorithm system works in a certain way, then it's just that's the way it is in the story. But if you move, if you um, diversify onto other platforms, then you will notice that there are other opportunities for you know, um, gaining um, followings and building a support structure and connecting into the business world. So I was also thinking that uh, uh, is. Since I'm also in, in this process, I um, find it very interesting that I could actually... I was thinking of posting some videos, maybe not so high level as this one, but you know, some videos about how do you do things as a starting... Uh, as a micro-YouTuber to improve the situation. And then you know, I'd like to also post some videos about what are my experiences, because like every every uh, pretty much every youtuber you go out there and you listen to the professionals and the media consultants and other things and you try and gather information and, and some of the things you can for example apply and try without actually in, having any impact on the content you create and um, you know I've, yeah, and then I could maybe have some comments as to the experiences and the, the good the other interesting thing is that um, uh, uh, I'm based outside the U.S., so I mean, we, I'm based within the European uh, Union, so we have a, a little bit of um, a different um, like view on life than what one would have if I was sitting in sitting um, uh, in in the U.S. And, and this, especially when it comes to strategies for monetization and income generation, that it gets, um, you know, we have a different you know, you, you see a different world when you're sitting within the European Union compared to what you're doing when you're sitting in the US. Uh, yeah, when you're talking about like sponsor links and stuff, then, um, or partner, partner links, or have many names for this. But anyway, that could maybe be interesting to produce a few um, uh, videos based on what I've been reading up and actually hands-on testing you know what what seems to work uh, what doesn't work or what doesn't even have any impact at all and I do I do think that the um, the current situation is that um, when you're a micro youtuber yeah the, the the most of the top three or four suggestions out there which are even currently published for in 2019 videos uh, they, they don't really have much of an impact for a micro YouTuber. I think that it's still one needs to be able to f identify and, and gather a natural follow. But we'll see. You know, uh, different channels have different experiences, and there are those rocket ships that go through the roof. But um, I hope that we in the community of micro YouTubers can actually stay true to our content and objectives without becoming victims of marketing in total. Because uh, we, we kind of run this from our own passion and our own feelings. Not, not, not to sort of make the machine happy. <laughs> Even if I'm very happy with YouTube. I think that it actually is, as a platform works, works very well. Um, but I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I mean, 2019 will show the, the competition is ripening and, and, and other social media. I mean, Google lost the 
social media, pure social media functionality wars by shutting down their Google Plus initiative. And um, take an example, Facebook has been heavily ramping up on video and integrated video and supporting um, video-based um, uh, social media. So I think that it's good that uh, at least the U.S. companies are competing with each other. And um, there's nothing to say that we might not get um, a co competition coming out of Asia. Uh, some of the Asian big giants might actually decide to go global. If not in the U.S., then maybe in Europe. And then we might be able to see um, some more. I think there would be a need uh, for some more competition in this scene. It would make it a bit more of a richer place for micro YouTubers um, to, um, yeah, to survive. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm optimistic. I think it's going to be a great year. Uh, so, and uh, I think that one should focus on one's content and what one believes in, and, and and just you know, consistency. Push out those videos every week, and and uh, I think it's worth to try a few of them few of the um, tips and tricks for for surviving on, on, on YouTube and um, I think for some it might work and then for others it won't work so well. So um, and um, yeah but I don't want us just to chase the algorithm. The algorithms always get adjusted and, and ultimately the, the back door is the one moves off to another platform. And, um, I have, I'm old enough now that I have been through the whole development of the internet and believe me, platforms have come and platforms have gone. I mean, does anybody ever even remember American Online anymore? No. It was huge and it died. So let's not say YouTube forever yeah, either. So, yeah. so secure your bases, you know, have content creation on and I, and I think it opens up op opportunities for better communication with our fans and support base. However, there is there is the only thing that when you aggregate across the different social media platforms, then we get into this issue that how how large are you? Because there are no there are few systems where you can aggregate across social media platforms. Yeah, not done. Oh. Yeah for a fun um, year in 2019 then. And um, see everybody in the next one. Oh, yeah, keep on forgetting. You know, if you like this video, uh, subscribe. You know, if you would like to have more of this type of content. And then click on the bell also. And then you can get a reminder that there's more content on its way. I know this video is not exactly the normal uh, technical content, but I, I I'm going to keep one one area of the my of the um, channel focusing on on um, you know micro YouTubing and social media in, because I have to deal with it on there also as a as a content creator. So I would like to just like um, you know throw out some supported videos now and again, like uh, I don't know. How do you how do you easily create thumbnails if I find a good way to do it or you know um, studio equipment you know lighting stuff but yeah whatever comes to mind or even these kind of overviews of the social media scene I mean this well, of course the internet is full of videos with <sighs> people saying that the, you know the the top ten tricks to become rich in five seconds but that exists in the real world also. So um, I don't I don't want to really start into that. And um, you know anything you want to be successful is actually requires an investment, work, and effort. Yeah. So you know your ah, oh, there's so many videos. I I usually skip those videos if there's like some kind of a title that promises you know, your first hundred, how to get your first hundred subscribers. And it sounds like you don't have to do anything to, do, to get them. <laughs> and I, and I, I think it probably did, if, if some YouTubers would actually like to have, have subscribers, I think they probably get pretty discouraged when they actually don't get any subscribers or any views. 
Midnight Star. But the thing is, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that us micro YouTubers that run a more of a hobbyist operation, we don't do this for the money or the fame. We do this because we think we have something, we know something, we would like to produce good content, we would like to put it out there, because maybe other people would enjoy it, will be able to enjoy it, and possibly pick it up and build on it. So that, that's why we do this. So, um, you know, the, the fame and the income, yeah, some people need it. Uh, income, I can understand, you know, every YouTube, my, even a micro YouTube channel has costs for equipment and, and utilities possibly, so I think that if I could have those covered in a reasonable way, I think it's not unreasonable to, to ask for, but, um, yeah, no, I think that we keep on grinding and, um, you know, keep the content coming, I think that's the main way, and, um, yeah, diversify. If you, if you have, um, yeah, you could even do an 80-20 rule, you know, 80% on YouTube and 20% somewhere else. And then you learn a lot also, you know, in addition to being secure if something, yeah, if YouTube starts a formula mechanism that, um, yeah, totally makes you disappear into oblivion. Because you will never, because if you will never be found, it doesn't matter how good your content is. Nobody will ever see it. So let's hope that YouTube will at least keep us visible somehow. So that we won't be producing good content that will just vanish. And this will be their problem when they get the next 2 billion users on YouTube. So how are they going to get this under control? Or they decide they don't care about micro-YouTubers and just say goodbye. And then we're going to have to be able to shift off to a platform where we can then um, yeah, do our stuff. Okay, well, I think that's enough rambling. This is already a way too long video. Okay. Yes. Subscribe and hit the bell if you feel like it. Would appreciate it. See you later.